brand new research has identified how bacteria in your gut speak to your heart, how this process breaks down with age, and what you might be able to do to turn back the clock on an aging heart. Now, this new research was just published in the journal Nature Aging, and it builds upon prior observations that specific gut microbiome-derived metabolites increase with age and appear to contribute to worse cardiovascular outcomes, worse heart health. Specifically, the metabolite phenylacetic acid and its derivatives are known to be associated with greater risk of major adverse cardiovascular events, things like heart attacks and strokes. Now, the scientists behind this new study first confirmed that indeed this PAA molecule levels were increased with age in both humans and mice. And then they moved on to interrogate the $320 billion question. How does phenylacetic acid PAA harm the heart? Through a series of elegant experiments conducted mostly in animals, the researchers decoded the mechanism. Aging is associated with an increase in particular bacteria of the Clostridium class. This was true in both mice and humans. And certain Clostridium, in the paper ASF356, harbor a gene that lets them produce more of this PAA molecule. PAA then travels through the bloodstream and damages the endothelial cells that line blood vessels throughout the body and in the heart. Specifically, PAA damages mitochondria, increases oxidative stress and the generation of harmful free radicals like hydrogen peroxide, and it increases inflammation. Collectively, these metabolic insults cause senescence of the endothelial cells lining blood vessels. Senescence is a hallmark of aging, a fancy word for age-related termination of cell division. Ultimately, this culminates in worse vascular function, worse cardio function, and increased risk for heart disease. To reduce this now to the simplest possible terms, or more accurately, the simplest possible terms that I find morally permissible, with age, microbes in the gut make more of a signaling molecule, PAA, that signals the cells lining blood vessels, including in the heart, to age and decay, contributing to cardiovascular disease. Does that make sense? Now, the methodology and the data do get complicated, but I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a taste of show, don't just tell. So here are some of the data from the paper. In this figure, you're looking at the effects of PAA on oxidative stress, shown in green. Clearly, PAA treatment induces severe oxidative stress, promoting endothelial cell damage and senescence. So let's look at senescence. Here you're looking at the expression of a protein called VCAM1, which plays a role in immune cell invasion and inflammation and is upregulated in senescent endothelial cells lining blood vessels. Again, clearly, there's a marked increase in this marker of senescence, this yellow stain, with aging. But, in the words of inventor and engineer Charles Kettering, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. With that, let's discuss four science-based solutions you can implement in your everyday life. Let's just get right into it. One, acetate. One focus of the study I've heretofore failed to mention was the molecule acetate. Acetate production by the microbiome can decline with age. And in the study, treatment with acetate actually rescued cells from age-related senescence. The mechanisms by which it does so include helping rescue mitochondrial function in endothelial cells and activating the antioxidant system NRF2 to combat oxidative stress. And if you want to learn more about NRF2, check out this video, also on heart health. Anyway, you can acquire acetate pretty easily by consuming, drumroll, vinegar. Most popularly, apple cider vinegar, which is normally 5% acetic acid. 
Consumption of apple cider vinegar at doses as modest as one tablespoon per day has been shown in human randomized controlled trials to have impressive benefits on metabolic health and weight. So try this. Try taking a shot about 30 minutes before each meal of apple cider vinegar. Personally, I like the bitter burn. Moving on. Two, chlorogenic acid. Coffee in yerba mate. Another molecule that activates the NRF2 antioxidant pathway is chlorogenic acid, which is found in coffee in yerba mate tea. We previously did a deep dive into chlorogenic acid for heart health in this video, in which we discussed three ways in which the molecule can protect the heart, including reducing inflammation, inhibiting foam cell formation like little hulks in your vasculature, and improving cholesterol efflux out of plaques. Now we have one more, protecting against age-related endothelial senescence. So it turns out your morning cup of joe might double as an elixir of youth. Just tell your barista, make your coffee senescence-free. And as for yerba mate, I'll remind you my go-to brand is Unimate, in large part due to its exceptional chlorogenic acid content as compared to other commercial brands of yerba mate. And if this is a drink you want to try, you can try my discount code, Nick Norwitz, for $50 off. Details are in the video notes. Moving on, three, vitamin C. Vitamin C has been shown in human studies to reduce levels of interleukin-6, IL-6, an inflammatory signaling molecule involved in the PAA pathway we just discussed, and also just involved in atherosclerosis in general. For more on the science of vitamin C and heart health, I strongly recommend you check out this video for more. But warning, it does go deep, deeper than a hungry raccoon in a dumpster. Okay, finally, Four, intermittent fasting. While not directly interacting with the pathways we discussed, fasting is generally thought to improve endothelial function. There are many reasons for this, but one, for example, is that fasting can increase production of nitric oxide, a hormone that is essential for proper endothelial and vascular function. And fasting also alters levels of certain inflammatory immune cells to generally reduce vascular inflammation. So you can actually stack all these interventions. I didn't just Google these interventions a few minutes ago before I recorded this video. I live them. Most mornings, I'm sipping yerba mate spiked with apple cider vinegar like a mad herbalist, while fasting like a monk who's admittedly a little bit too neurotic for that profession. So yeah, I might be biased with the lifestyle tips I just presented, but I also might be right. Take a moment now to consider the biology depicted in this graphic. This basically sums up all we talked about in this video. And let me know in the comments, does this little summary graphic resonate with you? Is it helpful? Will it stick in your brain? And will it make you change your lifestyle habits? So in summary, wrapping up, this new research uncovers a remarkable mechanism by which our gut microbiota can accelerate cardiovascular aging vascular senescence, and how, with age, the rise of specific microbial metabolites like phenylacetic acid, PAA, can quietly erode the health of our blood vessels from the inside out. But far from being a cause for despair, this knowledge offers a roadmap for action. And that's what this is all about, leveraging education and curiosity into motivation to stimulate simple lifestyle strategies that can collectively make a big difference. I hope you agree. And if you do, please consider subscribing here on YouTube and to my newsletter at staycuriousmetabolism.com for more nuanced deep dives coupled with practical tips. I'd really appreciate your subscription, but even more, I appreciate your curiosity. I appreciate it even more than that raccoon if he found a full pizza in his dive. Anyway, my final words to you today. Your heart is listening to your gut. The real question you should ask yourself is, what message do you want it to hear? Stay curious. Have a good one.